Uh, okay, so hello to all the guests. Um, please wait for a moment. I think we will start around eight o'clock. Okay, so uh, welcome to all our guests. Uh, this is the this is the fourth and um, final online workshop that we'll be holding for this series. There'll be more coming in in August. In August. So to our new participants um, and all the viewers out there, welcome back. Um, to our new participants, welcome, and to our older participants, welcome back. Just um, a quick jog of the memory. Uh, we first started with a uh, talk about urban gardening uh, by Shaolin from Eat Shoots and Roots. Uh, then we did uh, another talk about butterfly gardening, which was done by uh, Dr. Siren, Dr. Siren Wong. And then last week we had a more general talk and that was about um, biodiversity gardening by Tan Kai Ren. So today, uh, this talk will be about uh, bee gardening. And today's speaker is Dr. Noraini Bahari, uh, who is a lecturer at UITM. But uh, first, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, UBI, we are, uh, UBI is short for Urban Biodiversity Initiative. We are an independent collective of, for urban ecology research. Uh, conservation and environmental education. We are based in Kuala Lumpur. So I'll be your moderator for today. My name is uh, Terry Gaziko. Uh, so throughout the session, if you have any questions, you can ask that in the Q&A box. We will be having a Q&A after this. Uh, if you're watching from Facebook, we are monitoring the Facebook. So just drop a message at the Facebook page and then uh, we can ask the questions to Dr. Narayani after this. So uh, this online uh, workshop series is organized by the Kota Damansara Community Forest Society with funding from the Habitat Foundation and the UNDP GEF Small Grants Program. This program aims to develop knowledge and skills among urban communities on how to conserve, improve and manage green spaces in the city. <laughs> so our speaker for today is Dr. Nari Bahari from My Bee Savior of Penyelamat Lebah Malaysia. And today, she will be approaching this uh, concept of bee gardens from her background as a landscape architect. Uh, Dr. Nareni is a registered landscape architect and senior lecturer with uh, the Department of Landscape Architecture in uh, UITM, Perak. She holds a PhD in environmental design, specializing in landscape and ecosystem services. And her research interest uh, is on the conservation of urban wildlife. It's, an integral part of uh, sustainable urban ecosystems. So that's all for the introduction. I will now pass it to Dr. Nareni and she can start her talk. So all, over to you, Dr. Nareni. Okay. Okay, thank you, Terry. Thank you so much for your uh, introduction. Uh, I hope that uh, our participants today are in a good uh, condition, good health. Uh, um, Welcome to the workshop and to our Muslim friend, uh, happy Aidil Adha. Today is our Aidil Adha. Okay. Uh, I believe that uh, most of you are now in Kampung. Okay, accept me because of the workshop. Well, well, that's no problem. I'm going, I'm going back to my Kampung tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, okay, I believe uh, as uh, Terry has mentioned just now that this is the last workshop in this series. So I hope that uh, this topic can further enhance your understanding of the uh, importance of uh, maintaining 
our biodiversity through the conservation of the bee uh, habitat. Okay, um, just uh, briefly introduce of uh, myself. I was graduated uh, purely from UTM. Uh, and uh, currently I was work I am working as a senior lecturer uh, in UIT Ampera uh, since 2011. Uh, but before that, I was a landscape architect in UCM for six years. So uh, I just registered uh, early this year as a member of uh, my B Savior Association uh, with my registration number A0001. Uh, perhaps that A is representing my uh, Perak country, uh, Perak state. And, and um, now I am standing, um, uh, representing uh, in the name of uh, my B Savior Association Malaysia. So uh, my uh, appreciation goes to my B Savior uh, as well. And uh, okay, that's all for my uh, brief introduction. And I would like to uh, also introduce uh, about this uh, my B Savior Association. Uh, which started in 2015 and um, renamed in 2018 as my behavior. And just this year, early this year, uh, we are uh, formed into a non-governmental organization, NGO, uh, under the name of uh, My Be Association, Rescue Association or My Be Savior Association. And uh, the main objective of this NGO uh, uh, to create a public awareness of the importance of bee sustainability, strengthening uh, efforts to increase the population uh, of bees, and uh, last but not least, uh, to empower the commercialization in the field of beekeeping. So our mission is uh, to preserve bees for universal sustainability. So therefore, um, our topic today is um, Let's start on the workshop today that is uh, 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 establishing the bee garden in the cities. So as we see here that uh, the shelf or the colorful of uh, fruit and fruits and food in the market that we visit. So uh, for so long we are free to choose to buy and uh, to take I home all screen. these fruits. Uh, Sorry? Can you, Sorry? can you share your screen? Oh! Uh, my screen. It should be the green button at the bottom of the screen. Share screen. Um, I cannot see the button. Hold on, I'll tell you. Sorry, guys. Uh, Uh, put your mouse at the bottom of the screen and then it should be at the bottom. Ah, okay, 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 I got it. All right, sorry, sorry. Okay, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay, can you see? Yeah, okay, fine. Okay. All right. All right, okay. Okay, all right. So, um, now uh, this is, uh, I would like to show you uh, the beauty of our, our fruits and fruits in the market. Okay, this is, um, well, actually, do we realize that who is behind this uh, colorful and the beauty of uh, these foods and fruits? Of course, the bees, okay. And, uh, but, if, but what if uh, one day we cannot see, uh, hold on. Okay. What if uh, one day, this is what we see. When we go to the market, then there is no more fruits. So we have to start worrying now because uh, what must we do? Because if the bees is disappear from our ecosystem, of course there will no pollination. And therefore, as we see here, uh, pollinator are vital to our ecosystem in which our future flies with them. So as uh, the world, uh, bees are the world's primary pollinators and they are critically important functional group. So according to researchers, roughly 90% of, uh, of world's plant species are pollinated by animals and the main animal pollinators in most ecosystem are bees. Okay. And uh, 
let me show you uh, some of the uh, example of the honey bee that are very important in uh, in 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 our crop pollination. For example, uh, Apis mellifera. This is uh, native to Europe or Western honey bee, and uh, Apis cerana. We have this in our country, eh, in our cities, Apis cerana or Eastern honey bee. They are widely managed in hives uh, for crop pollination. And they are also presumably that certain agricultural uh, pollinators worldwide. But uh, bees population are declining all over the world now uh, when the CCD or uh, colony collapse disorder came into picture. So uh, colony collapse Colony Collapse Disorder or CCD is actually uh, the uh, abnormal phenomenon that occurs when the majority of worker bees uh, colony disappear. They're leaving behind the queen, they leave leaving behind plenty of food and they also believe uh, leaving behind a few of uh, nurse bees to care to the remaining uh, immature bees. And this CCD uh, first identified in 2006 in conjunction with the drastic rise of um, reports of disappearance of Western honeybee, uh, Apis mellifera, that, that, that I just showed just now, in uh, North America. But however, in 1998, it's actually uh, beekeepers in most European countries have observed a similar uh, phenomenon. And especially in Northern Ireland, uh, they receive reports that uh, the decline is greater than uh, 50%. Okay, so now this phenomenon uh, become more global and now it's affected uh, some Asian and African countries as well. So this is, therefore, this shows that the great uh, need for protecting, conserving and preserving our bee populations uh, we have to start worrying now before it is too late. Okay, um, the cause of colony collapse disorder (CCD) is uh, mainly because of uh, climate change, because of uh, non-native species, uh, pesticides, and uh, gen genetically uh, modified crops. So I will not touch uh, detail on this. Okay, uh, just briefly show you the list. But however, um, uh, many bee species are currently face uh, population decline because of uh, discontinuous supply of floral resources, uh, disease, um, habitat fragmentation, and also the climate change. So these are the factors that uh, affected our bees. Yeah? So therefore, bee needs us, okay? And how can we help them? So we must help them. Uh, to me, uh, from the uh, perspective of landscape architect, uh, one of the ways that we can help to preserve uh, their habitat is by establishing the bee garden. Because uh, uh, by establishing the garden, uh, we can help uh, to preserve and restore uh, their population. So in the context of uh, we are talking today in this workshop is that in the city's con uh, context. Because uh, I believe cities hold the key to save the bees because uh, cities uh, encompass urban green spaces, okay? And uh, the urban green spaces or UGS, such as green roof, public gardens, uh, community gardens, uh, allotments and domestic garden and so on. So their ability to support Biodiversity has been uh, recently acknowledged and there is now um, a call to effectively integrate this UGS, right, urban, urban, urban green spaces in biodiversity planning and management to ensure their full inclusion in uh, biodiversity conservation. Okay, um, the urban garden is actually uh, what we are uh, concentrating now is that uh, uh, home it's a, a, a garden that uh, among uh, these favorite place, uh, places to hang out. Okay, because of the wide range of fruits, vegetable, flowers that can be found in the garden. So uh, many studies found that uh, urban garden often attract up to 10 times more bees than the places we might typically consider bee heaven, such as nature, reserve, parks, cemeteries, and other public green, green spaces. 
You know why? Because uh, bees um, are unable to strive where they are trees or turf alone. So we should plant in varieties of uh, flowering plants, uh, especially uh, rich in rich in uh, pollen and nectars. Okay. Um, Let's take a look. Uh, uh, the bees is who, who, who are the bees? They are actually uh, uh, provide a vital service uh, of pollination, okay, for flowers. And it helps her, it, it help us to have a healthy crops and thriving ecosystem, uh, which in turn, it helps us to, uh, to live healthier and thriving lives of our own uh, as well. So, um, in simple words, the bees are important for overall health of the environment, our ecosystem, and our farms. All right. Uh, before we proceed, I would like to uh, uh, explain um, to show the differences between bee and wasp because some of of us are still confusing to differentiate between these two. Yeah, uh, I just uh, quote some some of the character at the aggressive feeding habits, identification, and also the characteristic. So as we can see here, bees are less aggressive, they are pollinators, their body uh, is long and fat, and uh, bees is actually non-aggressive and they don't prey on other insects, okay, compared to uh, wasp. All right, uh, just a brief on that. And uh, the, these are the uh, types of bees that can be found in our cities. Uh, we have honeybee, lebah madu, we have lebah kelulut, lebah tunggal, and uh, lebah dengung, okay, bumblebee. Among, uh, among these four, I believe that the most glamorous is uh, bumblebee because of uh, the uh, Transformer uh, movie. Eh? Okay, uh, let's take a look now. Uh, the establishing of bee garden in the cities, this is uh, our topic uh, today. Um, Bees are unique group of insects and they play a major role in, in, in plant pollination due to their absolute uh, dependence on flowers as the source of food. So therefore, bees, bees that live in the cities, they seek out green spaces like parks and gardens. So the provision of these green spaces in urban parks, in urban areas can provide appropriate habitat for them. So this uh, could help in the conservation of the bee. So let's take a look at uh, some of my, I would like to show uh, some of my students' work here. Uh, we designed the parks in uh, Metropolitan Batu Park, Kuala Lumpur, um, where in, uh, now is the existing condition of the park uh, with uh, minimal um, activities. Uh, we can see uh, the, uh, okay, the parks is uh, now uh, having a, uh, uh, walkway, uh, jogging tracks, okay, some of the dataran here, the square, uh, one of the dataran here, the square, and the lake, and uh, I believe I, I, uh, the activities such as uh, uh, skateboarding, okay, in, in this uh, garden. So uh, activities such as jogging, strolling, and picnicking, and some of uh, the visitors are playing kites as well in the garden. However, there is no uh, bee garden in this uh, park. Therefore, we propose uh, the improvement of the parks that uh, we insert uh, also the bee garden as the uh, uh, main attraction of the park. And we purposely uh, locate, locate this uh, bee center garden at the main entrance so that uh, when the visitors come to the garden, uh, I would like them to see the, the big garden first, come to the big garden first before they proceed to other spaces in the parks. And to support this big garden as well, we propose another supporting activities around the garden so that this area can become more vibrant and more attractive to the visitors. Uh, as you can see, the uh, artist impression of the area of the central big garden we have the uh, fountain and uh, the colorful of uh, flowering plants, of course, uh, rich in pollen and nectars. 
uh, to support uh, our B to 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 come to this area so that um, they can um, collect the pollen and nectars. At the same time, the visitors also can uh, observe their behavior. Uh, if uh, here is the uh, outdoor cafe in front of the garden, it is where uh, while we are having our nice coffee, the bee also having their nice pollen and nectars around the cafe. Okay, and this is the gathering area, chatting area, so that uh, we also uh, planted with uh, plants with uh, flowering plants for the bees. So um, overall, the garden will be um, uh, uh, will support uh, the conservation through the um, uh, improvement of the metropolitan batu park. Uh, perhaps that in the future, this will become uh, one of the uh, uh, conservation uh, garden for uh, bee. Uh, this is uh, to show you uh, that. Um, when we propose the bee garden, uh, the most important thing is that uh, the flower should be planted in large patches because um, uh, this will allow, uh, uh, the, allow uh, bees to dine in one spot okay, uh, for a long period of time because uh, bee expend too much uh, energy on flying from location to another location will cause them to be under stress. So this is uh, not uh, recommended for any uh, bee garden design. So to make sure that uh, in one spot we have uh, more than two or three species. Minimum recommended uh, by the researchers is uh, 10 species. Okay in one spot. Okay, um, this is another uh, proposal project from uh, my student. Uh, this is a vertical garden. We have uh, in, in, in KL Forest Eco Park, we have a quite a limited space. So uh, in a limited space, we can also propose the bee garden uh, whereby the vertical bee garden will be the solution. Vertical garden is actually a wonderful option for those with uh, limited spaces. So we may use uh, whether the wall or sometimes we use trellis as the media to hang uh, on the plants. Okay. We also provide the bee uh, pond for bee to uh, take some water because uh, bee also need a water apart from uh, the nectars. So put pebbles around the uh, around the pond for the bees to land on, okay? Because bee is easily drowned, so they need uh, the pond uh, the pebbles so that they can uh, land on the uh, uh, stone or rocks, okay? Okay. Um, I would like to proceed now with the uh, what are the types of green spaces that are suitable for us to uh, create the bee garden. There are many different types of green spaces in cities uh, when uh, considered collective, collectively as um, wider green infrastructure, they can create an extensive and powerful recreational, cultural or community facility, uh, can improve environmental quality and health as well as providing uh, uh, diverse and species rich habitats. So uh, these are uh, some of the uh, types of green spaces uh, that uh, we can uh, create our we can create our uh, bee garden. We can use urban square uh, as this uh, proposal, as this uh, graphic uh, artist impression. This is for also from my uh, students' uh, project. Can become uh, because why? Because uh, urban square it can become a focal point in the city, so it is uh, to attract uh, urbanites to guide, to gather, and socialize. And why not we extend this function uh, now to also become the main attraction or spot for bees to have fun as well. And by planting varieties of trees, varieties of plants in the planter box, okay, and uh, we also provide, we also can propose. Uh, the green roofs when we when we propose the uh, gazebo 
why not we use the green roof in order to um, propose variety of uh, plants in the square. So urban square essentially can become one of the significant places for preserving and uh, conserving the bee population. All right, uh, the other uh, green space in the, in, in the cities that can be found is bioswale or rain garden. So we may design the bee swale garden here so that uh, uh, in addition in managing our storm water through the bioswale or rain garden, so we also can take care of our urban bees. All right. Um, next is the vertical wall. Okay, it is nice if uh, one day we can have this uh, along our highway, okay, where uh, this is a vertical garden because it has, uh, vertical garden have an amazing and dramatic uh, appeal and public uh, vertical gardens began popping up in major urban centers all over the world, okay, and this, uh, uh, the building, okay, can cover uh, in hundreds of species of living plants, for example, like uh, in these images, uh, hundreds of living species of living plants, and it can be a perfect uh, garden uh, for the bees as well, okay. And um, last but not least, uh, the green roof, as I mentioned before, in the urban square, is also uh, one of the type of uh, green spaces in cities that can also be created as a, a bee garden. Okay. Um, the other concept of uh, establishing bee garden is through uh, the concept of bee pop-up garden. As it names pop-up garden, it means that uh, it can uh, created in anywhere in our uh, green spaces. We don't have to be in, in, in a big scale. We can also create it, create it in, in a small scale, uh, like uh, at a roadside, for example. Uh, we can also create our pop-up garden. For example, um, this is one of the uh, project, my student's project. This is the before uh, we create the uh, urban garden, the garden pop-up garden, a bee pop-up garden, and this is after uh, the pop-up garden has been created. So this is it. It, it shows that uh, it also can beautify the environment, uh, and at the same time, it also providing the uh, foraging habitat for the bee. And uh, next is the other uh, proposal is in uh, our park neighborhood park, neighborhood green spaces, or any uh, green spaces, no need to be the big one. It also can be uh, proposed as a, can be established as a big garden, as long as uh, we uh, provide them with the uh, uh, suitable plants, the uh, bee preferred plants that is rich in pollen and nectars, of course, and then it can become a bee pop-up garden as well. So the idea of why bee pop-up garden is that uh, when the bee, when the gardens pop up, therefore the bees will pop in. So I would like to bring you to the example of uh, bee pop-up garden from the uh, from others. This is in Sweden, if I'm not mistaken. They already have their bee pop-up gardens, and uh, they, this garden comprising uh, different levels uh, of hexagonal. Uh, structures which act as a planting vessel and they contain uh, plants, uh, water, okay this is uh, the inside view of the bee pop-up garden and uh, they have the green wall roof and this illustrate how uh, they really serious in conserving their bees. Okay, this is another uh, way of uh, doing the uh, pop-up garden by using the simple materials. Uh, and again, we should have uh, more than uh, two or three species in one spot. They have perhaps this, uh, they have more than 10 species. Okay, 10 is the minimum. This is another uh, types of uh, bee pop-up garden we can propose in our cities, in 
future, perhaps uh, uh, my behavior can uh, start the uh, the initiative. Okay, um, and this is uh, another way of uh, establishing the bee garden in a simple way by using the planter box. We can incorporate or integrate with uh, edible garden as well. Uh, so uh, it can be in one area. There is a bee garden. There, there, there will be also uh, the uh, uh, edible garden. Okay, from the view of landscape architect, uh, these are the uh, landscape structures that uh, we should uh, have in our uh, in creating a bee garden. Uh, we have uh, softscape, hardscape, and the water feature. Whereby the softscape is uh, bee preferred plant and recommended if uh, the best is the native species because native species is for native bees. So it should be rich in pollen and nectars. And to uh, support this softscape, we also have the hardscape in terms of uh, planter beds or planter boxes, as I as uh, shown in the previous slides. And we also have can have a bee houses and, or bee condominiums or bee hotels uh, and uh, water feature uh, to make sure that uh, the water should be the fresh water source. Okay. Uh, to be more detailed, the plant selection, the sourcecape, is uh, should compose of native plants with varieties of bee preferred plant species. Okay, I will show the uh, list uh, in the next uh, slides. And rich in pollen and nectar, of course, should be flowering all year round. We have to select carefully select the plants and intensely fragrant, and also the have the vibrant colors. Mm. These are some of the uh, sample of uh, types of species that preferred uh, by the bees. For example, the Ulam Raja, Rose Jepun, Angelonia, okay, Air Mata Pengantin, uh, the name is very uh, interesting. Bunga Jasmine, uh, Bunga Seroja, okay, just to name some of uh, the plants. And these are actually the list of uh, honeybee attracting flowers. Uh, for example, in, 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 in the picture shows the uh, coromandel, Assistasia gengetica. Uh, it's one of the favorite, uh, favorite uh, plants uh, by the honeybee. We can see the bee is, uh, you know, heavenly, uh, collect the pollen and nectar. And the, for the Kululot, uh, these are the leaves, basil, lotus, water, lily. So uh, perhaps that you may uh, Google the, uh, uh, the picture of the list, okay? All right, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I would like to bring you to this uh, website. Eh? Okay, this is from our El Elmi. El is actually our city of Sahar in my Bee Savior Association. Uh, I would like to show you the rare bumblebee of Malaysia. It can be found in Cameron Highland. Okay, so whoever is going to Cameron Highland, uh, you may uh, try to observe uh, this bumblebee. Okay, it's very beautiful uh, creatures. So uh, please uh, help us preserve them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, we go to the next uh, slide now. Go to the hardscape. Uh, the planter box and the uh, planter boxes. Okay, it, it is an ideal way to making uh, to make it possible the, your for your garden. Okay. And uh, to support is our our source kit, okay, especially uh, for the uh, area that we have lack uh, of land area. So we may use uh, the planter boxes and the planter beds, and we may also use the vertical wall as I mentioned before. 
and also the B houses or B hotels or B condominium, uh, whichever you want to call it. This is to attract uh, native solitary B species. Uh, we, the solitary bee will not uh, produce honey. However, they are also important uh, in our ecosystem. So we provide them this uh, hotel or condo or houses in order for the honey bee, uh, order to solitary bee to raise their young, to lay their eggs and uh, to rest. All right. Um, I would like to show you now a small scale of bee garden images, okay, from the others. Uh, we can also build our bee garden in the rooftop, on the rooftop. Uh, this is from the Canada Beekeeping Association. Uh, we also have uh, residential bee gardens. Uh, we can uh, plant the flowering plants in front of our veranda. Okay, just nice, uh, the colorful, you can see it. And uh, the individual bee garden, uh, this is the most simplest way of uh, establishing our bee garden. Just use the uh, wood or planks, okay. And we also have the, we still have the uh, three basic or three landscape structures of uh, creating the bee garden. We have the hardscape, we have the softscape, and perhaps we have the fresh water pond uh, inside the garden. Okay, uh, let us uh, build our bee gardens by having these uh, four uh, components that is plant multiple of plant ma plants, multiple plants. Okay, minimum is 10 to 20. Okay, instead of two or three uh, species. Uh, reach of nectar and pollen, uh, use organic treatments, okay, no pesticide or fungicide because um, uh, bees are very sensitive to pesticides, it will kill them immediately, and uh, build the houses or condos for the solitary bee to join uh, the garden and uh, don't forget to provide them a water feature. A basin of clean water is enough. Uh, place the pebbles, okay, for them to for the bees to land on, as I mentioned before. So, uh, who should involve in establishing the bee garden in order to conserve and to preserve uh, the bee in the cities in the time of crisis of the declining of their population? All. The local, from the local authorities to the landscape consultant, urban planners, park managers, NGOs, and to individuals like us. Okay, and with that, uh, I would like to uh, end my presentation here, the workshop today. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for participation. So I pass back to you, Terry, for a Q&A session. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Noreni. So, we got quite a lot of questions right now. Um, I think I'll just wow. do it. <laughs> uh, Okay, I'll start with this first one. And this is uh, it's a very common question that we get asked. Uh, okay. Is it safe to bring children to a bee garden? And uh, is it safe? Are bees safe animals? Yes, yes, because... Um, Bees, when they are uh, when they are performing their foraging uh, activities, uh, they are not uh, aggressive. Okay, as long as we don't uh, disturb them. And one more thing is that uh, bees in the garden, when they are they are uh, they are actually doing their foraging uh, behavior, it's not in a group. They are in in in, in a solitary. Uh, uh, behavior so that it's not dangerous to bring uh, the kids to the garden. In fact, uh, it's good to bring them. Uh, this is some of the uh, education session as well. We uh, can uh, can teach them to observe uh, the bee. Okay, just don't touch the the the, the bee. Don't disturb them. Then uh, things is going to be okay. Don't worry. Okay, the 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 the, gen, the dangerous is when we are in their uh, route in a group okay 
uh, there are the case, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the boy gets stung by the beast because the uh, the boy is uh, accidentally in their root, in the beast root. Okay, so that the beast feel that they are uh, uh, they are uh, attacked by the boy, so they therefore they become aggressive and attack the boy. Okay. Okay. Um. So we have one more question. Uh, what action should we take if we find a beehive in your housing in your housing area in your taman? Oh, um, actually, if the the height is um, very high, for example, in the trees, uh, that very very high, I'm, I I I don't remember the the, the height. Uh, according to my behavior, just let them alone. We don't we don't need to to transfer them or to uh, move them to any other places. But if the we we find the but if the hive is in the house or in the low level of the trees that we can reach the hive, then on, then we can ask uh, the my behavior to uh, come and uh, transfer the hive to other places. Okay. Um, okay. Another question uh, coming from one of our audience. Um, they would like to know uh, where your bee gardens are proposed to be built. Do you have like any gardens that might be built right now or in the future? So in the near future, we don't have uh, any places to build the, the, the bee garden. But uh, I do hope that uh, through my bee savior uh, initiative in future, we we are planning to propose to uh, perhaps uh, in my case I would like to propose to the uh, Majlis Daerah Perak Tengah. Uh, in now we are having the big garden in in UITM Perak. We just started, but for the Lebah Kelulut. Okay, so I hope that in 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 the near future we can expand it into another. Places, but for for now, I have started in uh, UITM campus. Okay, um, so there's one observation from uh, C H Ong here, who's saying that uh, we find that um, when people fought for ADs, um, it tends to wipe out bee colonies too. Do you also see the same observations? Uh, what's the effect of fogging on bee colonies? Oh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, fogging also, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure about that fogging. I have to uh, ask uh, uh, the expert uh, on the beast. Oh, no. Sorry, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure about that, that, that fogging uh, effect on the beast. Okay, uh, but uh, generally, for based on a ecological standpoint, uh, we do see some evidence that these are being affected by fogging. I mean, I I mean speaking as an ecologist, <laughs> so oh, okay, okay. Is, uh, thank because, you. Uh, yeah. mm, okay, okay, thank you for uh, telling me that. Thank you. Uh. Um, another question is how much would it cost to maintain a vertical wall? This vertical garden. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. It depends uh, the scale. If um, sometimes uh, uh, some of the vertical garden is uh, on the commercial building, some uh, on the uh, personal building, private building, and some are uh, at the only the uh, small uh, small scale, like like on the trellis. Okay, trellis. We can build it in front of our uh, porch. Okay. So it depends. I cannot tell you the exact figures, but uh, yeah, it's quite uh, expensive for vertical garden to be maintained, especially uh, in the uh, high rise building. Okay. Okay. Um, so another thing is that are most bee preferred plants the same as butterfly preferred plants? Is there like mm -hmm. a so if so some plants attract bees? Do they also attract butterflies? Yes, some. Uh, uh, this is what we call uh, uh, what we call uh, flower 
uh, flower pollinators uh, attract attract uh, something power, flower pollinators it means that uh, all pollinators attracted to that that the same flowers yes uh, um and i think the last question that we have in the queue is that um what do you know the scientific name of the Cayman Highlands bumblebee you showed just now? Oh, that one. Uh, no, I just got the the picture uh, just now. Uh, so I'm sorry that I uh, I have no I couldn't get the the species. But I hope that I can ask uh, Che Izatul after this. I think because uh, I just uh, got got I I I just got the the, the website just now. I think you can, uh, to the viewers out there who might want to know, maybe you can check out the My Bee Saviors website. Uh, do you know yes, that? Yes. Uh, that one, that, 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 that flicker, you can click, okay. you can click that uh, website, yes. Yeah, can you maybe share that uh, that address with the, with the, on the chat, then maybe the people can visit it and have a look themselves. Uh, okay, I, I will uh, share it later. Sure. Okay. Um, Okay, I think that is actually most of the questions answered. Okay. Uh, but I have one more question. Uh, so, one one big issue for when we're working with like biodiversity gardens is that uh, Malaysians are very, they feel very scared of bees. Yes. Is there like a way to to solve this problem? I mean, sometimes people tell me uh, we want to have butterflies, but we don't want any bees. So is there a way to, to make people less scared of bees? Yes, that that is the challenge that we are at my bee savior are facing now. So what we can do is that uh, perhaps that uh, we are trying to uh, we are trying to uh, hold any uh, a, a program awareness program in order to inculcate the awareness among our people. So perhaps that we may start uh, in 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 the uh, educational institution. Uh, so we also uh, plan uh, to um, to have more program, community program, okay, in order to tell them that uh, to show to them that bees are not as dangerous that uh, they think. Because uh, when we have, we don't have knowledge about the things, uh, especially, we will have the wrong perception uh, towards that bees. So uh, that is uh, my Bee Savior Association. One of our objective is to uh, creating awareness among the uh, our community. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So one more question here. Um, what do you think about? Uh, what's your opinion about farming kelulut? Because a lot of these colluded are harvested from the wild and then that might deplete the wild population. Sorry, again, Terry? Can what, you? what is your opinion on the harvesting of colluded or the stingless bees? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think about um, the farming of stingless bees? What is your opinion? Mm, the is quite a popular honeybee in our country right now because uh, they are not uh, because as its name is stingless, so they they rarely sting us, right? But uh, the kelulut is perhaps that uh, it's easy to harvest, uh, and they produce uh, honey. And now uh, it can be commercialized, uh, and uh, most of uh, beekeepers are. The keepers uh, love to, you know, to uh, uh, to harvest this lebah kelulut, right? Mm, yeah. Am I right? There is. <laughs> yeah, um, I think one of the issues right now is that <laughs> when you harvest them from uh, wild, sometimes they destroy mm, wild nests to get it. So, mm, so oh, okay, yeah. Is there any anything done by my bee savior about that, or because right now uh, there's the law enforcement on protecting kelulut, what kelulut is very weak? So far, my behavior, my behavior uh, now they have their sanctuary in Madi, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and lebah kelulut is one of the uh, lebah that uh, they have in their sanctuary. And when they, uh, uh, when they conduct the, 
uh, they uh, save the bills from the uh, uh, based on the people uh, complain. Uh, they found that most of them are lebah kululut. Okay. So, uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, that is what I uh, uh, get the news from the some of the members in the uh, the association. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this bee sanctuary? This is the first time I've heard of it. Oh, I, 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 I just uh, joined this My Bee Savior early this year. So uh, just uh, I just got a brief uh, brief information from the situ sahaja Cik Zatul. Uh, because when I I asked him that uh, where did they put uh, when they transfer the bee from uh, from the people house from the residents complain, they said that uh, they 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 will transfer the bee into the the sanctuary in in Margi Serdang. Okay, and what happen if the sanctuary is full? Uh, they will uh, take the bee and uh, send it to the nearest forest. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, okay, one more question from the audience. Yo King is saying that, asking that, are blue banded bees rare in Malaysia? Sorry, blue? Blue banded bees. The one that, uh, the one that I have shown in the website, isn't it? Uh, no, the ones, the ones, the stripes are not yellow, but they're blue. The blue. Yeah. Uh, the, the the blue bumblebee. Blue bandit. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was found in Cameron Highland. Oh no, that, that's a different species. That's the blue carpenter bee. Uh, oh, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, well, to answer the question from your King, mm -hmm. uh, because I have observed blue bandit bees even in KL. Okay. Um, so they are a species of solitary bee that lives. Uh, the main habitat of nesting is actually in uh, clay. So uh, if you have like exposed clay cliffs, they actually will nest near your house. Um, oh, I see. And they are attracted to many flowers in gardens itself. Uh, usually you find them at the edges of forests. So oh, you, okay. you, you can observe them. Mm, okay, thank you for the information. I just... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Thank you for the information. Quite a rare, unless you like look into it, sometimes people don't know about that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm still, uh, I, I, I am still uh, studying the type of bees now. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank okay. you for the audience. You you are more uh, resourceful than me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. One more question from Facebook. Uh, they're asking what kind of bees are suitable to rear in Malaysia? So far, um, in my bee savior, uh, list of bee that uh, they have is uh, uh, the Apis cerana, Apis dosata, Apis, uh, I can't remember the name, uh, the Lebah, Lebah Kelulut, Lebah Kampung, Lebah Madu. Uh, that, 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 uh, that are the common species that uh, can be found in our cities. So to uh, for the honey, mostly they uh, uh, they have uh, lebah kelulut for honey. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, honey bees and then lebah kelulut. Yeah. Okay. Apis cerana, apis dosata is commonly found hmm. in our cities. Yes. Yeah. So we have a comment here by uh, Ilmi, I L M Y. Uh. Haha, <laughs> Cik Zatul. <laughs> Our bee expertise is from Adi, okay? The blue banded bee is uh, of uh. my whole uh, list here. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's saying that uh, in Malaysia it's not really called a blue banded bee, but it's called the Sunda digger bee. Ah, okay. Blue banded bees can usually be uh, usually found in only Australia. All right. Okay. Thank you, Cik Zatul. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Cik Zatul is the uh, expertise in the uh, in the bee species itself. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh. So yeah, um, the Amagilia singulata. But I believe that Malaysia might have Amagilia themselves, but I'm not that certain right now. I need to double check my references. 
So Amigella cingulata is the blue banded bee from Australia and it's native to, uh, but it also occurs in many other regions. Oh, okay. And uh, according to here, it conduct it. Who said this? Oh, Sweeney. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one very interesting thing about blue banded bees is that they also do buzz pollination. Is where they grab onto the flower and then they vibrate themselves so that the pollen will drop out of the flower. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there are many, uh, yeah, there are many, many species of bees. Uh, actually, I think our, if you check the list, it's like almost 260 plus species in Malaysia. It's quite a lot. Yeah. So okay. I think one person knowing everything might be a bit difficult to. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's some records of Amigile Zonata, I think, in Malaysia, but I think. Uh, do we have any more questions? All right, I think. Yeah, if, if, if that is specific on bees, I think uh, Cik Izatu is uh, the correct person to answer it. Okay, so I think um, there are no more questions. Uh, okay, thank you. So I think we can close our, oh, this is the first time that we finish on time. Usually the speaker <laughs> goes a bit off. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for staying through this session. Um, I think uh, throughout this whole workshop series, we hope that everyone learned about uh, the different types of biodiversity that we could have within our city. It's not just um, what we have now, but I think we should also think about what we potentially could have, what, uh, what type of environments uh, could we make that would be better for our, that could be better for our, our cities itself. So, uh, now we'll share a QR code uh, on the screen for feedback uh, after this. Um, so if you watch uh, these videos, can you please uh, give it your feedback on the QR code and then it'll help us a lot. Um, as well as if you want to watch the previous videos or previous uh, workshops that we've done online, um, all of it is up on YouTube if you want to look back on it. Uh, as well as our Facebook and Instagram pages. So, uh, before we end, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Narayani and her team. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so you can reach them at um, yeah, Instagram, which is at Penyelamat or their Please. face page, which is My Be Savior or Penyelamat Lebah Malaysia. And, uh, do follow Ubi as well on our main Facebook, which our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, um, which is at Ubi, Ubi underscore my, my. And if you're interested to learn more about um, just urban wildlife in general, you can log into Ubi dash my, uh, Ubi dash my dot com, uh, where we put up a lot of information and we will also have the summary, the written article summary on this, about this workshop on that website. So uh, thank you so much Dr. Noraini for participating uh, and you always, you seem to be very loyal you, even in the older videos you also joined. So uh, thank you so much for joining us um, and thanks to the audience for uh, participating. Uh, we'll put up the QR code now and then if possible please leave some feedback. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. Thank you for the sharing, uh, for the knowledge sharing. Thank you.